Hi, my friends. Thank you so much for being here today. I am definitely not at 100%. You can probably hear it in my voice a little bit. Last week, the girls came down with some kind of stomach bug, and amazingly, I escaped that one, and I'm so glad. But this week, me and Bubba both are dealing with some kind of respiratory thing, and it has really caught up to me this morning, but I thought, given Christmas approaching, if, if I don't shoot it today, it might not happen. So I want to go ahead and do it. I'm excited. I could still not feel well and wake up excited to do a makeup video. But it's going to be kind of a random grouping of newish stuff, both drugstore and high-end. The first thing I'm going to use is from Hard Candy. They have a Sheer Envy Matte Serum Primer. I've used the glowy version that's in like a purpley packaging before, and I thought maybe I should check out this one too. It says mattifies and clarifies, and it's got kind of a pump style design. I wonder if this is what they're moving toward with all of their primers. It looks like kind of a cloudy, almost like a traditional silicone primer. I do feel a nice slip across the skin. Actually feels like some added moisture. And the other day when I used this, I thought it doesn't seem to really be mattifying on contact the way some mattifying primers do. So we're just going to have to see like what this does in conjunction with the foundation today. You know what I mean? Because as it just sits on my face, I mean, I, I just look like I have moisturized skin. And then my new complexion thing that I wanted to focus in on today is the new L'Oreal True Match Radiant Serum Concealer, which I have in the shade Light C1. I thought I'd combine it with another L'Oreal product and we can just see how we like it. I wore this little duo yesterday and I thought I actually did have really good staying power. I tend to have good staying power with the True Match Nude Hyaluronic Tinted Serum. I've added a pump to mine. If you're new here, this product comes with a dropper, but the pump is, I think, so much more effective, and it just gives you the same amount to work with every time. But I am really getting down there with my product here. I'm going to need to repurchase. And I'm in the shade 2-3 Light in this one. So now I'm just going to dab that around. Still, I feel like even as that primer has set, it doesn't look super matte. I'm going to blend this in with my e.l.f. Duo brush. No, but I'm definitely bummed with the sicknesses going around because, as I've said before, with Dad going through chemo, you don't want to expose him to any sort of illness. So I've just kind of had to simmer on the fact that, you know, Christmas may not look exactly the same as always this year, but this too shall pass, and it's all in the name of getting healthy. And as you may have heard videos back, like his a recent PET scan came through showing no signs of cancer, but he is finishing out the remainder of his chemo treatments. As I sit here today, there are two left, and that does just compromise his immune system, of course. So sending love to everyone out there whose Christmas just may not be exactly what it always was. And I hope that you can still look at the season and find things to be grateful for and keep the knowledge in your mind that your present situation isn't your always situation, you know? I just blended that in. Gosh, I love that foundation. It's so good. It was an Emily Award winner this year. Just a strong medium coverage. Putting it on top of that primer, I still, like, I'm just a little befuddled by this uh, matte primer because it doesn't really seem like it's mattifying my skin. Like, my skin doesn't feel much different than it ever does when I'm using this. But again, I had good staying power. This generally always works well on me, but maybe the primer helped a little bit yesterday because I did put it through a super long day. We had a four hour practice. The teams I usually work with, they generally practice at the same time, but here they were split because of a special little project. And I'm gonna have to blow my nose. Just gonna dab over my nose with any remnants that are on there and then we'll let concealer work with this redness. So again, it's the True Match Radiant Serum Concealer. It says it has 1.5% hyaluronic acid and caffeine. And I feel like the concealer is very lightweight. We have kind of a triangular little applicator here. And I'm going to use a little bit more today than I have been because I feel like I'm tempted to build it in the end anyway. It's very lightweight. It's not like the fullest coverage concealer, but it does wear well. It doesn't look heavy on the skin. And I felt like by day's end yesterday, I was looking at it like, you know, that's good. And by the way, thank you so much, Erica, for the cute little pajamas. I think I'm going to stay in them all day today. Okay, so we're just running this around, spreading it out with the smaller end of my brush. This is our coverage maximizing step. We make those dots take up more room. I'm going to get really good around the nose here. If you haven't been checking out, I'll link below to Erica's Instagram 
and or TikTok. She's been sharing some great little like holiday baking videos. She's a little holiday goddess, okay? So check out some of the stuff she's been uh, posting over there. I do miss her vlogmas very much, but I am enjoying her little videos of the things she's been making. I have a really similar takeaway on this product as I do this one, where it was a product that made me think going in, okay, that's going to be really over the top hydrating probably, you know, it's got hyaluronic acid listed, the word serum is being used, maybe it's going to be a really like hydrating borderline skincare type of product, but I actually don't feel like this concealer is very hydrating at all. I think it's capable of looking fresh all day on my skin, which is a pretty much normal skin type most of the time these days, but it just feels like a normal thin lightweight concealer that's giving medium coverage. I got a shade that was kind of light on purpose because I do want a good brightening effect. But yeah, it's definitely, it's not a concealer that's doing the most, it's doing the medium. And if you're getting it thinking, I'm going to get this because it's going to provide a lot of extra hydration to my skin. I just don't, even right now, um, without setting it, it doesn't feel especially like extra hydrating. Elf Hydrating Camo Concealer uh, provides a lot more hydration. By the way, it looks like some exciting new things are coming down from e.l.f., a new formula of their Camo CC Cream, I think. Anyway, with those two products on, the skin is looking decent, honestly. I've just got a little more darkness in there that I think a more heavy-duty concealer could do more for. And I am going to set, I'm going to use Maybelline Fit Me today because we're just obsessed and we love it. And then I have a new little cheek palette today. I have a lip combo that is new to me but it was something I was completely influenced to buy on TikTok. Someone shared this lip combo that they said they loved so much, I thought it looked really good, and I bought it, and I need your input on whether it looks good on me. I don't know. Powder applied, and then powder gets kind of dusted away. Um, like I said, my skin wasn't incredibly dewy after that concealer, but I always want to set. And then whatever's left on the brush, we can kind of run that around on the T-zone a bit. Yes? Next up, I have this palette from Bare Minerals. This was sent to me in PR. It's a beautiful looking palette. Um, I think for holiday, it seems as though they've put out kind of an ocean theme. This is Ocean Sunset Glow. And it's got several shades here. It's got the Kiss of Spice, Soft Coral, and Peach Glow. They say it's inspired by sunsets over the shimmering ocean. Three warm hues highlight, sculpt, and add sun kiss radiance to your complexion. So I feel like this is too soft to be a full-on bronzer. It's also very shimmery. So before I go in with that, I'm going to use some kind of bronzer that I have. You know what one I love but I don't think is around anymore? This Butter Coffee Bronzer from Physicians Formula. Does anyone else remember this? Mm, it smells good. I love that scent and the tone is so good. I keep that part there to remind myself, yes, there was an overspray on it. So I just like to remember when there was or wasn't overspray, I guess. But I love the tone. I was just using it the other day like, oh, that's a good, good bronzer. And my knuckles, they're not as dry as they look, but I am definitely getting dry on the hands. I need the vanity cream on it now. I need to get in a better habit of like, after I wash my hands, I throw on some hand cream because it's all the hand washing. I'm gonna sculpt a little bit with this. I can't get over how cute these PJs are that Eric has sent. Like the top is super cute, but wait till you see the pants. I don't, I don't know how I'm gonna show them. Last night at the latter part of their cheer practices, the teams did a little gift exchange. And that was so fun. So fun to watch. All the kids unwrap their gifts. Everybody's, you know, just super jazzed up for Christmas as is. And when a kid gets a gift that's like a couple days early, it's like, whew. There we go. Got a little bit of depth to the skin. Maybe I need a little more up here by the hairline. As far as this goes, let's go into the Kiss of Spice just lightly. I feel like a little's going to go a long way. I don't know. What's it doing? I don't want too much shimmer all over. I can tell it's adding some. A little bit of warmth. Maybe just a little out here. It's doing a little, not a lot. And then I need this soft coral. I need this soft coral to do a lot for me today. I really need this to bring back the look of life and health. Okay, brush picked up a ton. It's really soft. Let's see. Okay, thank you. Needed. Mm, that's good. That blush is beautiful. 
I love it. And it seems like any glow in that is just a soft pearlescent kind of thing. This looks like it has a lot of shimmer. And I think we're going to see a lot of shimmer with the highlight as well. Look at that pretty shade. Um, really bringing back memories of the Milani Minerals blush in Mai Tai. That perfect peachy pink. Oh yes. Okay, so here's where we're at with the complexion. A little bit of glow is going on. I'm not loving what happened on the forehead with that stuff. More blending needed. I don't know. Just an overall tone that I'm not perfect with. Peach glow. Okay, a little bit is on my brush. We're going to do a gentle swirl of it right here. What a pretty finish. Brightening, but not full of particles. Really nice. And suddenly she became dewy. That's really pretty. I'd say it's a palette I'm not as a whole jumping up and down over, but it's reminding me to check out any blushes I have from Bare Minerals because that formula was soft and lovely. And the star of the show, I think, is really that soft coral blush. And then for setting spray, I repurchased some Milani Make It Last Original because I kind of thought, you know, I want to compare this in a little bit more closely with my other setting sprays that I like. So let's use some. And the way I kind of test a setting spray, because it's hard when you think about, well, you're using different foundations each day. What if it's the foundation that's wearing well or not well? I've kind of determined that I stick with one for the week and just kind of assess, generally speaking, worn with different foundations that I am familiar with. Did I feel like this helped or hurt the situation, basically? So that's our complexion right now. Um, I have nothing new for brows, so I think I'm just going to fill those in and come right back. Brows are done. Eye primer is on, Milani Eyeshadow Primer, and this is the new eyeshadow palette that I'm going to use. Um, I know I mentioned having this on in one of the Emily Awards videos, I believe. It's from The Balm, and they have this new mail order eyeshadow palette. So they're always doing their cute little, like, kind of retro pinup type designs on it. It looks like a little package. It's got the address here to Just In Time to need it my way. <laughs> You've got a whole little message from this guy um, talking about the formulation of the eyeshadows and then fun names for everything. But I thought I would use this today um, just to show you how it goes on. It's all kind of a rosy mauve look. So I'm gonna go into this one first. This is a matte and your mattes are here here and this really dark one. I love that there's something super dark. And then you have kind of like a couple of more mid-tony, medium to deep with that one with shimmer. And then this one has some shimmer too. But I'm going to use Rich and Single. So all of them are like a name <laughs> of a guy. This is Rich. We're going to use that in the crease and just get some kind of like dusty rosiness put in. I've used this palette a handful of times since I've had it, and it is just a general look that I like, although I would kind of have to say that it's not an incredibly unique thing for my collection. A Dusty Rose shadow look isn't exactly hard to come by if I started going through drawers and looking for other palettes, you know? But I do really like the intensity of that mid-tone. Look how nicely that turned my crease into something very soft and natural, but with a little bit of rosiness. Okay, and then I'm going to take Kenny Keep Up down here, this deep kind of plummy shimmer. I'm going to get a little bit of that on my brush and just kind of see what happens if I add some of that to my crease because I don't want to yet go quite as deep as that darkest shade. So go to this, it has a little bit of plum, and I think that's pretty going in there too. Pretty, yes, I'm trying to use my space, okay like the space between eye and brow, trying to make it take up some. We're really focusing above that crease line to end up getting some lift. Memory card said, no ma'am, you gotta empty me out first. Okay, so that's that kind of plummy shimmer just mixing in. And then I feel like I wanna take hold in my bags right up here, this shimmer, and use a little bit of that like under the brow. First off, I'm gonna take a bare brush and just blend my edge, just staying on the edge. Okay, fold in my bags. Oh yeah, that applies a nice little bit of gentle sheen. And then we finally dig up a flat brush. This one down here, his name is Max E. Mum. So I'm going to pick that dark, very dark, plummy, maybe a little bit of a plummy brown, but mostly plum. Real dark, flat brush. And the intensity isn't 
super immediate with this. Like it's gonna be a buildable intensity shade. It's not 100% with one swipe on, what you see is what you get. But as you can see, I go back for a little bit more and now we're seeing the richness out of it. So what I like to do is just place it with the flat brush and then I can go in with either a small brush or a grease blending type of brush and really work it out and get it smooth. But for now we're just placing and that placement is outer part of the lid and up into the crease. So it's a brush flip. It was applying this way and then we let that application side of the brush hit the crease and pull up. See that? Don't be scared. It can look a little dark here as you pull up and then we can soften it some more. Mmm, it's my kind of tone. It's my kind of tone. Taking the original crease brush and I'm just gonna go over that crease. Not even really focusing on the edge of things. I'm really like trying to take that deepest plum and just integrate it, you know, in a really soft way into the crease. Add a little bit more to this outermost corner. She was missing something. I think this is shaping up to be the best look I've done with this palette so far. I'm really paying attention to letting those shades just merge and look really, really softened out. Okay, but we're starting pretty dark with what's coming on the lid. I was thinking I could do Willy Spoil Me with <laughs> some of this. Pick that up with a smallish flat brush and kind of use that on most of the remaining lid. And then we have Hold in My Bags who can go around the inner corner. Like I say, bring your sense of humor when you're using your stuff from the balm. So this is coming off just like a soft pink shimmer, not like bubblegum pink, but there's a rosiness. The whole look is kind of giving me a naked three sort of feeling. And then holding my bags, my shimmer up here. Remember we used this under the brow at the start. Let's just have some inner brightness right here. What do we think? I'm liking it. So color wise, as you can see, I mean, I feel like we use these colors to their fullest intensity and you're getting a soft mauve -y look to the eyes. It's not super pink. It's not super purple. It has sort of a cool neutral mauve -y feel. Now we do have a couple of these new liners from Revlon. So last video, we tried on all those new Revlon Super Lustrous lipsticks, which was super fun. But in that package, in that PR package, they also included these Colorstay Multiplayer liquid Liquid Glide Eye Pencils, and they've got a little brush attached, and I think the idea is that these can be sort of multitasked with. You could apply them like a shadow stick all over your lid. You can really blend them out. Here's the thing. I have did some swatches on my hand, and I'm totally able to rub these away, and I was hoping it would be something that would set for long wear, but it's not looking like that's maybe what these are gonna do. I was hoping it would be a really easy formula to where you could blend it out until a point, but then eventually it sets. Well, that stuff's been sitting on my hand for like over half an hour now and it's it's not set. But I pulled out like this dark brown called High Stakes and this is kind of a taupey shimmer called Under the Radar and I thought I could at least try to work them into the look. I'm feeling like, yeah, they're gonna be nice and soft and they're going on like absolute butter. But what use is an eyeliner to me that's not going to like set up and last a long time? So you could thicken this out at the outside and then you could pull in this brush, kind of makeup by Mario style. You know how he does with his liners. And you could kind of brush it out, you could extend it more. I'm just kind of using it to blend that thickened outer part of the liner. The application is super duper easy. Granted, this is a brand new pencil. This is that nice deep dark brown. Again, I'm just simply, I'm not going for a big wing. I'm just thickening my line out at the outer part of my eye. And then I'm pulling in the little brush to help me blend it into my shadow look. Really easy. I will say they haven't been totally rubbed away. This dark brown is lasting better, adhering more to the skin than the shimmery taupe is. And it looks like there's a rusty shade, more of a grayish color, a murky blue, and a black as well. But I am gonna try a little of this taupe at least down here on the lower lash line. I just thought it'd be pretty with the look. See, it's got a little light reflecting quality. I could see it being pretty applied 
in a more full-on way all over the eyelid. If you look there toward the lower lash line, it's got a little sheen. But I think what I will do in the name of staying power and knowing that it can be rubbed away easily, I will get use out of that last shade, Luke at me now. And we'll just take a little bit of him, this matte kind of coordinating color, and top off that uh, shadow stick or multitasking eyeliner. Alrighty, that works. And then, you know what I'm really gonna do to lock this in for sure, is take a little bit of Kosas Cloud Set down under. One of the various ways I like to use Kosas Cloud Set is taking a small, well, sort of like a chunky eye brush, but go directly under your lower lash line just with a little bit of product. And this is like your staying power insurance right here. Good. We're almost to this lip combo that uh, is kind of questionable for me. Um, but we're going to do some lashes. And I mentioned wanting to try the Essence Lash Primer again, which I've used this and liked it in the past, the Volume Booster Lash Primer. I got my hands on it again, and it deposits quite a bit on the lashes. Um, depending on the mascara I put on top, like, this doesn't always help in the curl holding, I feel. But the tube is really new, and maybe if I can get a little less on the lashes, it won't be as much of a factor in dropping the curl, but it does really beef them up, I can say that. So I'm going to use some of this today. White lash primer. You're going to see it immediately, like one swipe. You're gonna see that white on my lashes. So with a primer like this, you're gonna let this dry down a bit. Otherwise, you're just gonna end up with a gray, ashy looking mascara. We don't want it to mix with the mascara. We just want it to be a solid first step, right? Something for the mascara to grab onto. There we go, see it? <laughs> yes, see it on there? And then you know what I wanna try on top of that today? Huda One Coat Wow. Because this is a mascara, while it doesn't like to build on itself, like go back for another coat of this, two coats always seems to create funky ends, but it builds on a primer generally pretty well. So I thought, how would it do on top of this? Because this primer honestly looks like it's doing the most for my lashes of any lash primer I've put on at this stage of the game. It just looks like it's deposited quite a bit on. So I'm gonna continue to let that sit for a moment and do some Cali Ray on the lower lashes while it keeps getting dried down. Oh, hi, hon. Hi, sweet pea. She's gotten away from all the powder puff carrying around, and there have been like twist ties that I think have come off of Christmas lights that I've put up and uh, different things, and she loves to get a twist tie and carry it around in her mouth and drop it somewhere for you to throw for her. She just wants fetch like a dog. This is Biscuits. Let's see how she does. All right, I want a big lash. It's kind of fun. Like sometimes I feel like the white primers, you know, you really got to take care to get it all covered up with the black fully and all, but at the same time, it is kind of satisfying to see a mascara coat over the top and see the lashes be a lot thicker. Wow, I'm liking this. It's thickened up the look of the lashes quite a bit. Yeah, I do have some areas at the root that are a little hard to reach. Like, look at that. That's a big old lash for your girl here. Okay, love. Really good combo. Like, I already thought this mascara was pretty good with one coat, but the primer is bumping it up even more. So what stinks is we had colds going around like a little bit before Thanksgiving as well. About a month ago. Good news is I usually tend to push through this stuff pretty fast, but still, it's not pleasant. Okay, that combo is looking really good. Dare I say, almost like false lashes. <laughs> now we're gonna try this lip, which I have been trying. I'm trying to get on board with it, but it's a fully MAC lip combo, and I thought it looked really good on her on the TikTok video. I'm sorry, I don't remember who it was. I don't think it's somebody I even follow. It's just somebody I randomly saw, but three-piece MAC lip combo, and I thought, I know a couple of those things are iconic products that I probably should have, like the lip liner in Cork and the lip glass in Oyster Girl. I've never used those, but I have in the past had a Viva Glam 2 lipstick, so that's the combo. It creates an interesting little tone on my lips, so I'm going to start out with this Cork liner, which is very brownish, okay? I'm getting a real good line on the outside and then starting to fill in. It's just interesting that it combines with the MAC Viva Glam 2, which is kind of like a cool nude, I feel like, but we'll get there. What the heck? What? 
She took your cat and your blanket. Nobody should even be awake yet. Well, Nookie, give it back to her. Nobody take each other's stuffies, okay? Roommate problems. Okay, my lips are crusty down here. Uh, I should have put something <laughs> more, some balm on there. Duh, Em, you're loaded with them. Um, put on a lip balm to start their skincare. All right, so there's cork. Cork is brown. Cork is brown. Browner than a cork. All right, and then we take this Viva Glam 2, which is like kind of a cool, almost blushed nude, I feel like. It's a satin, and so we're going to apply that on there. Moisture, moisture, the lips are begging, moisture. Okay, and now things look a little grayish, like a little bit of a grayish brown, I don't know. And then we've got Oyster Girl, pinky with a little bit of sheen, and I swear there's like maybe even a, a tinge of a golden shift when it catches the light, but we're gonna put this on top. And I do love the smell of MAC lip gloss. So we're gonna get that, and we're gonna apply this all over. And I feel like I totally see the little bit of a goldeny shift once it goes on. But what are you thinking about this color? It feels like the tone of something I would have worn in high school. It's just funny because I saw it on her video and I was completely sold. I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna put that on my next Ulta order. And then I get it home and I'm like, is it really all that good? What I love is the finish. I love the opaque color. I'm just not sure about the tone, but I'll try it out today with this look. We'll get this makeup headband off. These are last night's waves, just kind of halfway hanging in there. I used my wand on my hair the other day. You know, I just had a thought. What if I blotted this off and tried to put on like a little more rosy gloss, okay? Like take this. This is our starting point. The fusion of all three things with a little gloss left over in there, just looking nude. What if we took the Buxom full-on plumping lip cream in Hot Toddy and laid that down on top? It's got a little more pink in it. It's not able to compete a whole lot with the depth of the brown, but mm, I kind of like that tone a little better. By the way, um, one day before school pickup, and it was a really cold, windy day, I had popped on a Buxom lip gloss before I went outside. And if you wear these cooling glosses on a cold, windy day, your lips feel freezing. Like, has anyone ever done that? Why does nobody talk about that? Okay, friends, thank you all for watching this video, this random assortment of new things. Um, one of the things I like best, and something I'm gonna continue to enjoy experimenting with, is the combination of that Essence lash primer with other mascaras. Now, one thing I'm already seeing though is a curl dropping. Like, it's just not what it was. But I am totally gonna keep working with that. I like the little palette from the Balm. I'm okay on the Bare Minerals thing. I really like the blush, but not so sold on needing the whole thing. And also this new concealer, like I was expecting something, I guess a little more revolutionary out of it. Like, oh, this is gonna be extra moisturizing or hydrating or something, but it just feels like a really standard medium coverage concealer to me. Um, but it does wear decently well. And I paired it with a foundation that I know works well for me. So the combination of the two has been good. But yeah, that's my look today, friends. Thank you so much for watching. I wish you all Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and I will see you again very soon. I love you. Bye.